Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Content warning. Today I'll be sharing some high school stories I once thought I'd take to the grave. These are salacious tales of youthful foolery that ended in apparent self-loathing and the loathing of the other person. It's a nasty thing to process, but here we go. So, in high school, there is this good-looking, popular guy in student government. Let's call him Jason. Jason was a tall, slim guy with curly hair and lightly tanned skin, crushed on by a throng of females he frankly had no interest in. We were both in track and field, so when we were stretching, he'd sometimes slap my thighs when my shorts were up. Actually, to be fair, a lot of us were sexually charged in high school and were constantly groping each other. But I think he had a curiosity for my thighs, because he had hairier legs and I, being of Asian descent, did not. Okay, enough about thighs. So I was in student government too, and we go to weekend conferences and meetings together, staying at nice hotels. On one trip, we were assigned to the same room with three other guys. And the whole time, he was making boner jokes with me, and copying a feel when nobody was looking. I mean, I played along, he was pretty attractive. So we ended up being paired in the same bed one night. At this point, I'm pretty sure some of the other guys in the room were still awake, but he basically reached over to compare sizes. <laughs> Let's not forget, this is high school, okay? Our blood was mostly pumping testosterone at this age. So yes, I reciprocated, which eventually led to, let's just say, us finishing the comparison process for each other. After that, he went to the bathroom and, well, I kind of scrunched into the fetal position. At this point, I was a regular churchgoer and brimming with internalized homophobia. While I couldn't resist my raging hormones, I also couldn't shut off this post-episodic guilt. I couldn't ignore the feeling and sting of immense shame. After he came back from the bathroom, he said he needed a round two to fall asleep. I was thinking, wow, okay, as a fellow teen, I understand, but I honestly don't want to. Yet, I hesitantly obliged to the pressure. After that weekend, I started to feel a sort of negativity towards Jason. Thinking back, perhaps it was my own self-loathing and guilt that I projected onto him. He seemed so carefree, and for me, I felt I did something wrong. Maybe I wanted to blame it on him instead so I could absolve myself. One day, in a student government meeting, he seemed to be joking around while we were trying to plan a stressful event. After the meeting, I basically said that if he didn't want to take it seriously, he should drop out. I felt justified. My frustration was rational. We were reaching a deadline and falling behind. That stress, along with the anxiety that others would be infected by his lax, unfocused attitude, culminated into an almost threat. Either get it together or leave the team. I'm still impressed at how non-confrontational he was. I feel like a jerk for being so high strung. Word got around and others weren't so happy about what I said either. While I definitely preferred working with people who were diligent, competent, and relatively more serious, I believe it was that projected loathing that brought me to say those words. After I became aware of this tendency of mine, I've since fought and overcompensated for it. But I sometimes wonder... Is this sexual shame and loathing completely based on social conditioning, stigma, and morality? Or is it part of a natural human reaction? I think a Western Christian upbringing definitely at least adds to the guilt. After that drama, my negativity towards Jason eventually dispelled. We weren't close friends, but we got along and didn't have bad blood between us. I came to appreciate him as a happy-go-lucky guy, and in some ways, I envied his ability to live so freely. It's been a decade since that emotionally confusing night at the hotel, and Jason is actually now happily married to a man, and has been out and married for a couple years now. I'm honestly really happy for him. Now, on to my second high school story, Jesse and Kevin. Kevin was the golden child, a year above our class. He was in the most competitive dance team on campus and was extremely popular. He was asked to be the spokesperson for some clubs, and his name and silhouette were even printed on t-shirts. His dad was a pastor, so he had a very squeaky clean image. Mid-semester, he started dating Jessie, a very pretty, popular girl who I had several classes with. She was like a nice Regina George, formal model and pageant winner, but without the vitriol and toxicity. After months of dating, they suddenly broke up to everyone's surprise. They were the perfect couple. What happened? Rumors went around and people started to slut-shame Jessie and blame it on her. But for me... I personally didn't accept hearsay as doctrine. What actually happened? 
At this point, Jesse and I were on pretty good terms. Now I'm sure you're definitely not wondering, why would a popular girl like Jesse talk to me? Let me remind you, I was elected into student government and seduced by Jason. So yes, while I was certainly a nerd, people did find value in a conversation with me, okay? But to her credit, she was a nice person in general, and alright, she was stuck sitting next to me in class, so maybe that's also why. But the day after the breakup, she was disheveled, sore-eyed, and ready to just about give up on life. I was really worried and asked if she was okay. After some silence, she opened up and shared with me. Kevin had invited her over to hang out the other day, and things escalated while they were alone in his room. Things got unzipped and, well, she basically gave him a blowjob, which according to her, he thoroughly enjoyed. But afterwards, you guessed it, the sexual shame sunk in, and he told her that he couldn't see her anymore because he's not supposed to go that far as a Christian. Honestly, I can't speak for him, but the whole story struck a similar chord. He felt wrong about what happened and placed that negative energy onto the other person. On campus, Kevin was still the high school stud, but Jessie was seen as dirty, slutty, and morally compromised. Her side of the story really helped me see what I had done to Jason. The way I viewed Jason after our experience, the way I pushed him away, rejected him, and placed my shame on him, it's something I don't talk about. It's something I'm not proud of. But it's become sort of a trauma that shaped who I am and who I'm not today. I never want someone to ever feel bad about intimacy with me, whether casual or serious. I never want them to feel like I'm dismissing them or loathing them. I'm aware of that possibility, so I try not to let it happen now. Not everyone is happy-go-lucky like Jason. It took several weeks for Jessie to get out of her slum. But thankfully, she did. And now, she's a big boss at a Fortune 500 company. You go, girl! So, that's it for this video. Feel free to comment below on your experiences. Have you ever felt sexual shame? Do you think it's purely a result of religious conditioning and social conditioning? And finally, it would mean so much to me if you would like this video and subscribe to my channel. Thank you, and have a great day!